I wish you yeah. love Chainsaw. and happiness. I guess I wish you all the best. So you take the Pulaski and dig around that while I'm cutting. Okay. How deep do you want it? You know what they say, right? What's that? A Pulaski's work is never done. Pulaski's work? <laughs> They're always got something to do, right? <laughs> I thought there was more to it than I, I originally thought. <laughs> How close to the tree can you get with a rush hog? Uh, probably two feet or so. Okay, so that's okay? Yeah, that's fine. She knows that the duck is bigger than she is. So this is a little trick I call uh, the stump mushroom, mushrooming the stump off. Uh, what I do is I cut it down flat as, as much as possible. And what, what you'll find with a stump, stumps will last in the ground for 50 years and you'll trip over them for 50 years and you'll hit them with everything. But you can take and knock off, kind of bevel or facet those corners. Uh, it, not only does it look a lot nicer, uh, but it also takes away all that problem of tripping on it. If you cut them down really low like this, you can usually take the dirt that you excavated uh, from the from around the stump and uh, mix it in, mix it in there, and uh, never know it's there. And if you're planting, I'll tell you what, this is the best place uh, to plant your little trees, your conifers, because of the the tree, uh, the, the the tree that was here before, has broken up the ground, sent its roots down in there, and uh, it can it's a, it's a good incubator for those little trees. Right here is a perfect example. Here's a volunteer fir that has started right in the middle of a of a big old stump. This was a probably a 32 inch tree right here, and it's grown right in the middle. And it's uh, the bark and the, what's broken down from the tree is natural mulch. It holds water really good. And this tree will do do really well. It's established in uh, taking advantage of all of that that good soil condition. Here's another one. You know, we had a 36 inch tree right here. We've got uh, a red fir and two white firs that have grown here, and, and there were quite a few more. This was after we there's actually five of them going. Here's another Doug. Uh, there are actually more, and we cut them down. So what we, what we typically do is, even though th it's a little bit dense in here for our liking, we don't want too many more trees in here. We will let a few grow, especially around the stump, stump areas, just in case we were to lose some of the big ones for bark beetle that we're not starting from scratch. So uh, we can always, if we could decide, you know, we can always decide not to leave them or take them down later, but uh, uh, we'll leave more than we, than we want just kind of for insurance.
not my best helpers, Cody. That's my shim. That's my shim. I'm, I'm, I'm leveling the table. Watch out. Watch out, Luz. Here you go, Luz. You got him, Dodger. Get it. Okay. Oh, thank you. So, what do you have for us for lunch today? My sweet boy is getting pickle relish. And we have salsa if you want. Mustard, ketchup. <clears throat> Lace. What a terrible, <laughs> terrible picture. Is that the worst? It is the worst. <laughs> um, Father, I don't like it at all. Uh, hamburger buns. Some Hebrew National beef ranks. Hebrew Nation. Hebrew Nation. What did I say? Nation. The National. The National. And. These are leftover from homeschool co-op. Svenska Fisk. Svenska Fisk. Did I say that right? You are so an um, international man of mystery. Yeah. Can I interest you in a sparkling water? Yes, please. Would you like me to open it? Um, no, I'll open it in the middle. Okay. Thank you. Heart racer, there's always an extra one for you. Mm -mm. Yes, there is. And Miss Pants. They but... both had breakfast. And well, they're both overweight. They have been working hard out here. No, 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 no. Look at those girls. They're enormous. I suppose Jack would be cross if I started cooking these without him? No, he'd be happy. Oh, that's hot. I think these guys will probably cook themselves right there. Stay away from those wieners. Heart racer, you stay away from those hot dogs. You too, Miss Pants. I think I don't know what you're thinking about. She likes to bring her recliner with her. She's a, a baby of luxury. Sweet Lo. Hi. Good grief, she looks as warm as a bug in a rug. Are you ready, Papa? For what? What's going on, sweet low? Cutie pie. She's just hanging out. She's got her cheeseburger. There's a sandwich. There, yeah, Jack is right. There is no patty on that. Hmm. Is she, are you going to bring her out? Nope, I think she is content and she's happy and I want to eat. All right, don't be don't be too flipping those things around. They'll fall off. If I fell down right now, Harcer would be very happy. Yeah. I think Lucy would be happier. Hot dog buns? How does that work? Get, get Lucy, get, get pants, get out of here. Good idea, Mama. Nothing but the best for you on our anniversary. Well, this is how I like to make it fancy. You know how I am. No ketchup, Jack? Nope. Just plain, huh? And a slight issue. I've got a little sap on my hands as well. I would wear gloves, but you know what they are. They call them, right? What? Gloves. Sissy mittens. No secrets. <laughs> Dear Father, we thank you for this uh, food. We thank you for this beautiful day that we have to work together as a family. Thank you for 14 years of a wonderful marriage and for our two beautiful children, our children and young teen. And we just ask your peace and blessings be upon this family today and everyone who is enjoying this video. Amen. Amen. There's no risk for her being cold. She's, she's probably crying because she's her arms aren't in, Her arms aren't even in the sleeve. Well, then I can put her in. I think she feels pretty warm to me. What's going on, baby girl? Hey, loafer. Mm. Just love her. Got Jack's old hat on. Graham's knitted for you. 
It's so cute. It looks She's like going to grow to this thing sideways before she does endwise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of turkey monkey. It's just a little bit. Yeah, it's such a cutie. Yeah. Hello, sweet love. Hello, baby dee. Whoa. Oh, you're, you're, you're looking at the dog? Are you looking at the dog? Whoa! Whenever she burps, you know it's uh, normally oncoming spew, which is kind of worrying. Yeah. Are you standing up? You're standing up, sweet little. Hmm. That's not a very pretty face. No, it's not a very pretty face. It's not. Oh, he's spewing. That's nice. Whoa. Dickle, dickle, dickle. Whoa. Oh, you're so serious right now. You were you were pretty fun earlier. Really. That is a lot of pink. You, you're so fat. You're so fat, baby. Dee. Don't look too comfy. Can Lucy have that last hot dog? No. Yeah. Why? Do you know how expensive these hot dogs are? The She's, dogs gotta eat. Dogs gotta eat. She already has eaten. Look at that, more than she needs, obviously. She's overweight. She's obese. Would you give an obese person extra food? Yes. If they're starving. <gasps> Cody. You know what, baby? So you are you're it contributing to her arith her She's heart. been out running around all day. How about half? Heart, give half to Heart Racer. Heart Racer doesn't need half. Yeah, well heart let's see, how about a third? Heart Racer gets a third. How about a quarter? Heart Racer's got such such poor teeth that you yeah, have actually, to almost have to <laughs> What she'll do is she'll just take it and lord over Lucy for a the next it. hour and lick it. Got very rudimentary knowledge of Star Trek. Star Do you Wars, want a, a bun with your hot dog? Well, that's because Star no. we watch Star what? Trek. Star Trek is you just want the hot dog Star Trek a million is, times better. Yeah. Okay. Star Wars is overrated. Star Trek is weird. There hasn't been a there hasn't been a good Star Wars since the first one, and that wasn't all that wasn't all that great. I mean, it's no Wrath of Khan. That's because you don't have. What's that guy's name? Ricardo Montalban. Ricardo Montalban. Welcome to Fantasy Island. Le plane, the plane. The plane. <laughs> what was the little guy? What was the small guy's name? Oh, I don't know. Remember him? No, see, no one knows. Uh, you did a great job. W wasn't that from Indiana Jones? Mm -mm. No, from uh, there was a TV show called Fantasy Island. It was Fantasy Island, and there was the guy that played Khan, Ricardo Montalban. He was this Rico Suave. Kind of the camp host, and people would come there, and any fantasy that they had wanted, if they wanted to be like a, a race car driver or a famous person, they could do have this fantasy. You know, it's so funny because I don't remember that at all. I just remember that there was. And there was always just moral lesson at the end. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't remember any of that. I just know the the plane, the plane. I, I, I think ridiculous TV shows that have a moral at the end are a bit silly. Well, sometimes they're kind of nice. It's kind of nice rather than some of the junk. Well, shows back in the day, many of them had a moral. Little House on the Prairie. Little House on the Prairie, Leave it to Beaver, those. Now, they have an agenda. The moral I don't mind so much. It's the the, the agenda that's so blatantly obvious it's just offensive. So please indulge me a few seconds for some shameless product placement. So a lot of folks ask you about uh, this particular work shirt that I'm wearing, and they have a rich history. It's called a hickory shirt, and it is the, it's the standard uniform for loggers out west, and it has been since the 40s, um, and it still is today. All of the loggers here, professional followers and equipment operators, you can pick them out in town because they all wear 
the classic heavy denim hickory shirt. It's got a, uh, as I said, an interesting history um, in that um, it was, some people called it a railroad shirt, uh, but it's made from a heavy cotton weave. It's very similar to a denim, and they're a wonderful shirt. Uh, being 100% cotton, it's a very cool shirt. It's a very durable, and it's really great for wind blocking. So I have uh, picked a um, uh, I picked out uh, the ones that I like and put them in my Amazon store, and they cost about $24. You can get them uh, from several different companies. Uh, Prison Blues makes them, I think, in Pendleton, Oregon, where the inmate crews sew them. Uh, you'll pay about $40 for one of those, or you can get one that's overseas for about $24. Um, and both seem, I'd have both, and they seem to be both really good quality. So I'll put those at uh, wranglermart.com. There'll be a link in the subject heading uh, if you'd like to get yourself a really cool uh, work shirt that uh, will quickly become your favorite. Now, to the agenda. You know, I was thinking, you know, I was as I was editing this co- editing this this video and the, the last comment I made and and I was it, it brought my attention back to all of the wonderful uh, well-wishing comments that uh, I received or we received from you guys uh, wishing us a happy anniversary. And Mrs. W and I we read all of them uh, together and we we're really uh, blessed uh, to hear all of these wonderful stories. And, and, you know, for some reason, and I don't know, well, I guess I do know why, and I'll explain why. Um, I was a little bit surprised, like, wow, look at all the happy people out there and, and, and fo- folks that said, yeah, we've been married for 17 years, for 25 years, for 45 years, and all of the, and, and all of the expressions of love and, and I guess the general consensus was, is, is you all feel like I do, is that you can't imagine um, waking up uh, without your that loved one beside you, and when I was thinking about agendas, and I guess the reason why I was so surprised to hear this outpouring of love is that we have been um, bombarded for for years and years about how messed up marriage is, and how it's uh, drudgery, and how it uh, never works out. It's how it's always settling, and and the old man, and and that that old bag, and the fighting, you know, the the, the fighting <laughs> husband and wife, and you know, it 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 starts to rub off on you after a while, and you think of the depravity that comes out of Hollywood and everything that is good, and wholesome, and right. And according to God's plan, a family that stays together, a family that loves one another, that works together, is portrayed as as it's perverted in some way. Or there's always some dark hidden secret. Or there's always some, um, oh wait, what's the word I'm looking for? There is there is some uh, there's there's some, something wrong. How it's always fake. And and what they and they what they lift up is the depraved, and and everything that is anti-family, you know, that, that, and they would have us believe that that is the norm, but it's not the norm. It may be the norm for those poor deranged souls, but for the rest of America and for the, for the majority of us, family is everything. And we love and respect our wives and, and we uh, take care of our families. And, and yes, of course, there are examples of men that, that walk out on their families and, or women that walk out on their families. But I, I don't think it's the norm. And I don't think it's near as, as prevalent as Hollywood would have us to believe. One of the main points I've always wanted to get through with this channel from the very, very first days was the importance of family. And that's why I do videos like this. I mean, there's nothing really here to learn, and 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 I'm I'm always somewhat surprised that, that people sit and watch them. But uh, I think what it is 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 we're all looking for am I normal? <laughs> you know, I I you know I you might be asking yourself, I well I I like to be home with my kids, and and I and I and I and I don't uh, cheat on my wife, and I and I don't do all these things that uh, the world tells us that uh, is going are going to fulfill us and make us happy. And I I guess for us to come together here and to see one another living this way, it's it's um that that um that positive reinforcement <laughs> and you're not alone um, and you're not weird and you're not uh, you're not messed up and you're not doing things wrong and you're not missing out. I'll tell you what, I've lived both sides of the coin and I can tell you the world has nothing to offer. It, and, and I'll close with this. It's, it's, it's so sad. Uh, I've seen so many examples of people that have bought this nonsense, bought this nonsense and especially women. I, my heart really bleeds for the women. You know, we, we have a waitress that there's several of them, you know, waitresses that come through this restaurant that we like to eat at. And, and, you know, many of them are in their mid thirties or late thirties. 
And, you know, they were promised by feminism, modern feminism, that they could have everything, that they could go have a career and they could do this and they could have multiple partners and, 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 and live this wonderful life and, and find this fulfillment. And what I, what I find with them is that now they're in their 30s, mid-30s, and they are working as a waitress and all of the plans and all of the relationships and everything didn't really work out. And now they want to have a family. And now they want to settle down and they want to uh, and they want to raise children. And it's almost too late. I mean, I, and I know people will argue with this. And, uh, and of course, there's exceptions to everything. But, you know, 35 and you still haven't met someone. And, you know, how long does it take to meet the right guy? Someone that's going to be a good husband and a good father and, and a good role model and a good leader for your family. I mean, that doesn't happen overnight. That could take years. It could take, what if it takes three or four or five years? Now you're 40. And what's, what's your chance of, of having a family? You know, it's, it's, it's really, it's really sad. Um, I, sometimes we uh, see these young couples in, in our church that are getting married at uh, 17, 18. And we think, oh man, you know, first thing is, you know, maybe they should have waited a little bit. And the more that I think about this and the more that I see the way the world is unfolding, the more I, I think that maybe they have it figured out that uh, to find someone that, that you truly love and is, is your partner in life and a friend, to be able to find them early in nightlife and not have to go through all of the heartache and get mauled by the world for 5, 10, 15, 20 years um, and miss your opportunity and lose out. Um, it might be the wisest decision anyone could ever make, but uh, I'm rambling. I'm rambling. I'm... <sighs> Everything's so messed up. But it doesn't have to be that way. The family is the, is the savior of this country. Um, it is God's plan until he returns. It is the closest thing that we have um, to happiness that we'll ever find on this planet. Um, and uh, make sure you take after it. Take, take care of it. Look after it. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next video.